So we have to explain how did the universe expand differently at early times versus now? It could be because the cosmological constant is different at early times or late times, or, and we have evidence for that at something like one in 30,000 percent chance of being, uh, uh, chance of being wrong uh, by fluke. Uh, but these two different measurements are so that was a possibility he did not consider. He thought it's not contracting as it would if there's only matter. So there should be some buoyant force that keeps the universe from contracting that he called the cosmological constant or the vacuum energy. Now we know that there is some form of vacuum energy. What was discovered in March and February this year by the DESI dark energy spectroscopic mm -hmm. instrument was that there seems to be evidence that the dark energy component is not a constant, that it's varying with time. And that, in fact, it's getting weaker over time and that the universe, even though it's expanding now and the expansion rate is accelerating, eventually that expansion rate will stop accelerating, come to neutral, and then it will start decelerating and the universe could, in fact, collapse. Like a sucking sound. Or, kind of thing. yeah, it could, it could be a giant sucking sound. Or it could, it could taper off asymptotically and just expand and dilute over an infinite period of time. Um, so there's possibilities that it expands forever, rips apart. All the matter, all the energy in the universe effectively rips apart after a finite time. That's called the big rip. Yeah, but does a big rip happen like in a snap of a finger at kind the of end deal? Of it, yeah, at the end of time it does, yeah. <laughs> at the end of That's time when good. the vacuum itself is decaying and ripping apart. Yeah, every every atom in the... Right now the universe is expanding, but we are not expanding. I mean, you know, Brooklyn's not expanding as Al V uh, said. Well, in, that's uh, a win for everyone. <laughs> that's right. Um, our, our waistlines might expand in my case. But but the, the key discovered by Desi is that that constant, which we thought would lead to the eventual heat, what's called the heat death of the universe, where the universe continues to expand slowly, cooling over time, Time, such that there's only photons left at the very end of time, and, but that takes an infinite or very long period of time, maybe tens of billions of years, so tens to a hundred times longer than the observable age of the universe today. What Desi has found is that that may happen much faster. Again, keep paying your taxes out there. Uh, I'm talking to you. Uh, because the universe uh, will not be changing on any rapid time scale. But it is kind of this paradigm that we now know that there is dark energy, but that it's not a constant amount of dark energy. The amount of dark energy seems to be de decreasing. It's not a slam dunk yet. And there are other observatories, hopefully like Simon's Observatory and maybe even Rubin Observatory, that will provide evidence, but the but the evidence that the universe is simple and explained by just dark matter alone plus a cosmological constant, that seems to be in a lot of trouble. And in fact, there are people that say that even the measurements of certain parameters, the most important one is called the Hubble parameter. Mm -hmm. The Hubble parameter tells you as you go out in distance, how fast is a given galaxy moving away from every other galaxy. That constant is the most important number in cosmology. It's related to how old the universe is. Right now, there are two different measurements. And just yesterday, the uh, team at the South Pole that operates a parallel telescope to the ones that I was involved with called uh, BICEP, their telescope is called the South Pole Telescope. They announced that there is a discrepancy in the Hubble constant that's at something like almost a one in a hundred million chance of being a fluke, like some really tiny number that they made a mistake that they make measurements of the, of the cosmos in the early state when it was young, when the CMB was first formed. And then observation using supernova and more local instrumentation, um, <clears throat> like uh, that was the recipient of the Nobel Prize in 2011, that instrument is showing a much larger value for the Hubble constant. And they don't agree. And the chance of them mm -hmm. being fluke disagreement, each one says they know the result to better than 1% precision. And they disagree at six, six, six times the individual uncertainty of each one. So there's, there's basically one, it would have to be a fluke that they're both accurate and it's just a fluke. We happen to measure, you know, one of them at the low yeah. end and one of them at the high end. That measurement is now was released yesterday by the South Pole Telescope. And it's the largest, you know, it, it exceeds the threshold of scientific credibility. Like it's it's now at such a level that you almost can't consider the measurements to ever be consistent again. So we have to explain how did the universe expand differently at early times versus now? It could be because the cosmological constant is different at early times or late times, or, and we have evidence for that at something like one in 30,000 percent chance of being, uh, uh, chance of being wrong uh, by fluke. Uh, but these two different measurements are really exciting. See, th that's another difference between a scientist and a fraud. 
a scientist is excited when there's a discrepancy. We don't say like, oh, uh, we, you know, uh, Keating yeah. proved that actually there's uh, there's lunar la laser ranging modules that have been proved. So actually, like, um, I should be excited because now it means that um, we're closer to truth. Like we have a Or you're example. finding something entirely new right. you never and thought the, about. Yeah, maybe yeah. there's actually, okay, maybe that proves there are aliens that are there that took right. the lunar module there. And, and so that would be more, I mean, I'm just making that up. But the uh, point, point is, made, yeah. a scientist should be the most excited to be proven wrong because that's how science progresses, right? If we thought Newton was the final word, we'd think that the speed of light is infinite, gravity is infinite, it's always one over R, that there's no subatomic particle. I mean, think about all the things that, if you stop science at any point in time, you ruin progress in humanity. Yes. Even though each individual scientist is wrong, I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. And if I say the earth is a sphere, I'm wrong too. I mean, we had this debate last mm -hmm, time. You made mm -hmm. it into a viral clip and I clipped it from your clip. I remember that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not a perfect sphere, but it's much more of a I sphere than it's flat. flat earth on me when you said that. I was like, oh <laughs> shit, here we go. Well, now you brought that in. So yeah. we got our little display over yeah, there. Yeah, I keep that back there as a reminder. But if you look at the universe, the universe is actually smoother than that globe. So that globe is not a relief globe. It doesn't have mountains on it or anything like that. But even if it did, the, the size of the mountains relative to the size of the radius of the earth is larger than how rough the universe is. In other words, the universe is more smooth, isotropic, and homogeneous on its largest scales okay, than the yeah, globe yeah. is on its largest scales, or the actual earth is on its largest scales. Meaning like, hold on, let me back that up. So the mountains within a globe relative to the radius, smooth, the radius of the earth Correct. are larger than what it would be on the hypothetical, air quotes there, mountains that exist in the, yeah. in the universe the in relation in the universe to the density. earth. That's right. Okay. The universal fluctuations in density and pressure at the early times so the 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 challenge is that um you don't have kids yet that you know i don't about, right no, not, okay. not that i know not about. that you know about okay so i have kids so when your kids turn two please may you have we need more people you know elon's all concerned about i'm looking forward kids. to having so kids. Have kids i'll it's definitely have several best thing in life yeah not a bar now but having with the person that you love the most that's best that's the then key, you have Brian, the, yeah, you gotta find the right one i have the algorithm i told it to lex and you never <laughs> you never didn't listen to me either all these guys think of how many unmarried podcasters there are uh that i love andrew huberman mm -hmm. dear friend Unmarried. I mean, Andrew Wonderful Huberman guy. knows how to juggle him, my dog. <laughs> shout well, out to the focus on that guy. Some of that's uh, made up. Some of that's I, I'll bet some okay. of it's made up, but shout out to the okay, focus. Okay, let's go there. through these guys, okay? Because you're you're in rarefied air. And I want to convince <laughs> at least one of you I've met. Okay, so I've talked to Theo Vaughn. I haven't been on a show, but I've talked to him. Um, he's unmarried male podcast, no kids. Andrew Huberman, unmarried male podcaster, no kids. Lex, Lex Friedman, unmarried podcast. Chris Williamson, unmarried podcast. Stephen Bartlett, I'm, you seen a pattern here? Like, there are way too many of you guys and maybe i gotta I'll do better fix it. don't worry <laughs> i mean i'm working on hopefully it. you will because the world needs more yes uh little uh little julians out there and julian yeah i don't Julians. think i don't think life would be fulfilling without that if you didn't find i mean obviously like you have but if you didn't find like your counterpart or someone you know the woman that can that can keep you honest and also support you in everything you do and then also like have your kids and raise them and you know continue the evolutionary cycle i don't see the personally i don't really see the point to life if you don't have that yeah i mean people worry about oh the uh you know legacy and even people like elon who's got a lot of kids i mean you have to understand he has so many kids he doesn't know how many kids he has <laughs> i mean they're coming out of the woodwork left and right um but look I think, at it. I think he's got to be careful. Yeah, that, he to be honest, definitely needs to be careful. He's definitely got this kind of messiah complex. I talked to him a for messiah a few minutes complex. on my podcast last year, and I, I tried to kind of convey to him that uh, that the Mars reality is not as important as basically fundamental physics and astronomy and cosmology. how do you feel about that uh well i kind of wasn't as good as maybe you would have been about it i i made it more personal i said look elon you want to go to mars and he's like yeah and i said well um which one of your kids are you gonna leave behind and he was on his son was on the podcast at the, it was on x it was a twitter space or x spaces and his mom and his son you know his son was there and his mom was there and um, this, and I could hear him playing in the background. I'm like, you and I are both fathers. You've had the tragic, uh, unfortunate occurrence of losing a child uh, in your life. <clears throat> you know, thank uh, you know. Th hopefully, that won't ever happen uh, again, or anybody that we love. But um, but you know how painful it is to say goodbye to a kid, and yet you know you can't bring X to Mars with you. It's not safe. It's not. Mm. It's not prudent. And plus, it's not within his free will domain of of, of expression. Like he might not want to go to Mars just because you want to go to Mars. So you'd be dooming him if you took him. So I don't think you'd take him, right? He said, "Yeah." And I said, "So who are you going to leave behind? And how is that going to go?" 
And and then his mom jumped in and said, well, we don't want to talk about anything unpleasant here. And she cut it off. So I talked to him for 10 no. minutes. I did get in a couple of questions about cosmology, and he's very interested in space and physics, and yeah. hope, hopefully he'll take care of Because the Starlink satellites actually contaminate some of the radio waves that we're looking for from the They Sandy contaminate it? Yeah. How did they contaminate it? They broadcast in the exact frequency range that we're looking for. So, so you shoot eventually, it down? Uh, well, I don't think you can you could take you don't it on do Mars. That? No, that would be, that'll be dangerous. you with the fucking Kalashnikov. Come get on. The, uh, <laughs> get the Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck up there with the jackhammers. Um, <clears throat> so anyway... No, life makes sense only uh, when you have something beyond yourself to yes. think about. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.